cosecant graph is the reciprocal of a sine function. So you would use the sine parent graph as a guide. And for a secant function, you would use the cosine parent graph as a guide. So I'm going to sketch those in quickly. I'm going to mark this as 1, and this is negative 1. In my sine parent graph, we should be able to sketch pretty quickly at this point. down that this is y equals cosecant x. We're going to erase that, or at least roughly erase that eventually, but this is our guide. And essentially, to go from sine values to cosecant values, we take all the y coordinates and do what with them? If they're reciprocal functions, then for example, the sine of pi over 6 is what? Oh boy, you're going to have a flashcard quiz tomorrow. FYI. If I don't hear these answers quick enough, we need to put some pressure on you to study them. One half, thank you. So the cosecant of pi over 6 would be what? No. Two. You just gave me this, the cosine. You were using the fact that sine and cosine are complements. Yeah. Cosecant is your reciprocal function, so you're at two. So any kind of value that you see, we're going to reciprocate. So if we start with this point, which kind of started our first cycle of sine, what's the reciprocal of zero? Undefined. So just like we saw with tangent and cotangents, if you have a sine graph and you're actually trying to use it to graph the cosecant, any place where there's a zero is going to turn into an asymptote. Okay, so all those numbers are pretty easy to reciprocate. So if we go through here, let's take this point, which is at a half. What's a half reciprocated? The y-coordinate is a half. We said a half reciprocated is 2. What's 1 reciprocated? Still 1. If we go over here, we have a half again. Reciprocated would be 2 again. And I don't know exactly what these, what these y values are, but let's say we get to a y value that's way down here pretty close to 0. Let's pretend it's 1 tenth. If you reciprocate 1 tenth as your y value, what is it? 10. So as we get closer to this asymptote, on our sine graph, the values are getting lower and lower and lower towards zero, which means the reciprocals are getting higher and higher and higher towards infinity, right? As we know, anytime you approach asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, I should say, your graph heads off towards one of the infinities. Yes? Over here, if you have negative one-half, the reciprocal of that is negative two. Same thing here at negative one-half is negative two. The reciprocal of negative one is still negative one. Again, if you think of a really, really small y value like negative one-tenth, I reciprocate that, it's going to be ten. I get even closer and I do like a y value of negative one one-hundredth, it'll be a hundred. So this again... 
So if you had to visually describe what it appears is happening, even though this is going to be a, like a not technical, technically right explanation, what does it look like is happening to get from the sine graph to the cosecant graph? It's almost a reflection over the maxes and mins, right? Like this parabola kind of flipped upside down using that maximum that then becomes a minimum. And that is, that is all you'll do. You'll use your sine graph or your cosine graph as a guide and just flip all those parabolas over their max or min. So then I'll just lightly erase this. And that is a cosecant paragraph. <clears throat> to see it on your calculator, you would do 1 over the sine of x. And there it is from negative 2 pi. Is this? No, I did negative. What's my window here? Negative 2 pi to 2 pi, just so it looks the same as our graph. My graph went up to 2.5 negative 2.5 to 2.5. So now this should look exactly like your paper. Good? Okay. The period of this is still 2 pi. It's still up, down, and then that cycle will repeat. Up, down, so it takes 2 pi to repeat. We can't really talk about amplitude again with cosecant graphs. When things go off towards infinity, you can't really... The only way you can talk about amplitude is if there's a wave. That should sound familiar to science. And then your secant graph is just going to use the cosine parent graph. as a guide. And then the first thing you should do is throw in your asymptotes just to give you that guide. So any place there's a zero, throw an asymptote. And then we just flip everything. and then erase your guide. So our domain and range definitely changes a bit. For our domain, x can be any real number except X cannot equal what? How would you describe what X cannot equal? Olivia, take a stab at it. Close. Like 2 pi over 2, though, is a multiple. So just you're missing one word there. What kind of multiples of pi over 2? Odd multiples of pi over 2. So you would probably say something like this. X cannot equal k pi over 2, where k is an odd integer. Honestly, if you wrote X cannot equal odd multiples of pi over 2, I'd be fine with that if there was an open response. It's just probably not going to show up looking like that. It would, they use k as like a random coefficient a lot of times with stuff like this and they just say that k is an odd integer. Your range, um, I would probably go interval notation with this. What would your guess be for the range, Sarah?
Well, what's the lowest value that this ever reaches? What's the lowest y coordinate that's ever going to get touched? Negative infinity up until what? And everything in between? There's some stuff in between that's excluded. So negative infinity up to what first? And then we'll do a union with something to infinity. So what, let me ask you it this way then. What sections of the y-axis are there no points in between? And above. So you're right, directly below one, there's no points in this region until you get down to where? Negative one. So between negative one and one, we don't want that in our range. We want negative infinity up until negative one, and that does include negative one, so that can be a bracket. And then we skip everything in between, and we pick back up at one to infinity. Does that make sense? And the secant, or the cosecant one from above is similar. Okie doke. Any questions? All right, so on the back, essentially, and they're not going to normally give you these instructions, they're just going to say, graph this. Graph 2 times the cosecant of 2x. What you have to know is if you're graphing a cosecant, you want to graph the sine version of that. So that's where they kind of elaborate here. Gra use the graph of this to obtain the graph of 2 cosecant of 2x. So forget this for now, and let's just focus on 2 sine of 2x. Where does this start? Is there any phase shift? No, so it starts at 0. And it's going to end one period later. So the period Mitch is calculated by doing what? And B is? So that would all be, so it ends at? Nope, your period is pi. If it starts at zero, it's got to end pi units later at pi. And then, so that, we use the B. And then the amplitude is just 2. So I'm going to count by 1s. I have to start at 0, end at pi. Sine curves have a mid, midway point. And then it's going to go up to 2, back to the midline, down to negative 2, back to the midline. This is your guide. So I'm going to continue with this. That's 2 sine of 2x. I'm going to actually lightly erase it now rather than working in and out of stuff. I can definitely see the remnants of it very lightly. So wherever, if I now when I make the jump to the cosecant graph, wherever there was a 0, I throw an asymptote. And there are a lot of them. And then that reflection off of the maxes and mins occurs.
hands cramped. <clears throat> yep. Um, you could. You should always be able to, like, if I said to do a table of values or something, you could not should always be able to do that. Um, there's nothing, it's, if I just said graph and I left it open-ended, I, I wouldn't expect you to do that. Um, but to do some of the, all, a lot of the parent graphs, we've done a lot of exploration via tables of values. Tables of values aren't the most efficient way, but when you're at a loss, sometimes that's your only option. Any questions? Okay, last one. What are we going to graph as a guide, Bridget? Perfect. So we're going to graph a cosine curve as our guide. We have no shift here, so we're starting at zero. And we're going to end at, but before we figure that out, we have to do our period. So, Nate, period is 2 pi over what? Very good, 2 pi over a half, which would give you what? Two divided by a half. No. Let me think about this. How many half cups of sugar would you need to make two cups? What? Two half cups and four. So a half goes into two. You could also do 50 cents into two dollars. There's another one. We're going to latch on to conceptual stuff that we deal with more often. So that's four pi. Or you could just keep change flip two times two. So if we start at zero, we end then at four pi. This wants our scale. That's just one cycle. So we're doing a little bit more than one cycle. I'm gonna put my y-axis over here. And every two units I'm gonna call pi. So this is negative pi, one pi, two pi, three pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. <clears throat> and then our, our amplitude is 3, but it's a negative cosine. So rather than positive cosines go maximum to maximum, negative cosines go minimum to minimum. So our minimum is at what value, Bailey? Negative 3. We're going to start there. And then I'm going to let this cycle also end at negative 3 over here at 4 pi. So in reference to my basic structure, I, I started with those two points. Halfway in between is going to be my maximum. So that's going to be at an x coordinate of 2 pi. I have a maximum of positive 3. And then zeros in between those. So this will come back up, and this will come back up. And now we make the jump over to the secant graph. So I can erase that if I need. I do need to eventually. I think I'm gonna, I like doing it before so I don't have to overly. Worry about erasing asymptotes. Now I'm going to throw in my asymptotes wherever the zeros were, so that'll be at negative pi, positive pi, 3 pi, <clears throat> and 5 pi, and then I reflect everything.
Okay, so if I graph this, negative 3 to type in secant, I have to do 1 over the cosine oops, of whatever. My window, I did what they did. Negative, they said they wanted their x from negative pi to 5 pi. I actually typed in 5 pi. It changed it to a decimal for me. And I count by pi's. And your graph should look like this. Good? <clears throat> so there's your homework. If you need graph paper, I'm going to upload a document.